Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi Chulim Daf Chav Dalid. We begin at the Mishnah, which is 16 lines off the top of the Yomit. And continuing with our lists of contrasts, things which are direct opposites of each other. So two sides of the coin. We spoke about Paraduma Eglarufa. Now comes Kehanim versus Levim. Says the Mishnah, Kosher B'Kehanim. Factors which are a non-issue regarding the Kayanim, regarding their ability to do Avoidah in the Beis HaBidosh, possible Levim, are considered disqualifying elements regarding Levim, such as the age factor. On the, on the other hand, <coughs> Kosher B'Levim, things which are not relevant to Levim, not uh, disqualifying factors, such as a personal body blemish, that's not a factor by a Levi, possible Kayanim, that disqualifies a kain and makes him unfit for avoid. So, a personal blemish, a mum, disqualifies a kain from doing the avoid, working with the karbonis and besamidosh. But it doesn't play a role when it comes to levim, who are in charge of opening and shutting the gates, singing as part of the choir to accompany the karbonis, playing the instruments. A mum is not a factor there. On the other hand, the age factor is something to reckon with when it comes to Levim, certainly when it was in the Midbar, where they had to carry the, the Mishkan, the heavy load, they had to be fit of age between 30 and 50. And that's not an issue, but Kayanim. The ability to sing, Kail, that's only relevant to the Levim, not to the Kayanim. Says the Gemara, Tanarab, we learned in a price. Kayanim, regarding Kayanim, b'mumin psulim. So Kayanim will have mumin, our apostle. But b'shanim k'sherim, the age factor, is not a factor by Kayanim. It can be as old as you want. On the other end, levim, the levim, b'mumin k'sherim. A personal blemish is not an issue there. But b'shanim psulim, the age is a factor. Too old is unfit. Nimtza. So it turns out we have this Running equation between Kayanim and Levim. Kosher or Kayanim. Something which is okay for a Kayan, possible Levim, is not okay by a Levi, and vice versa. Kosher or Levim. Something which is okay by a Levi, like a blemish, possible Kayanim disqualifies a Kayan. Now, Emily, how do we know this is so? The Tanah Rabban. Zeus Asher Levim. So the Pasuk there is speaking about the age factor. A lady is meant to be between 30 and 50 years old. And then it says, Zois asher Levim. This equation, this system applies to Levim. Now what's the uh, point of Zois? What is that sort of highlighting? Mata Malaymar. Levisha Namar, since the Pasuk delineates the age factor, Uben Chamishim Shana Yashuv, once the lady hits 50, he goes back home, Lamadi, we learn from Hillel Levim that regarding Levim, age is a factor. Shashonim Paislim Bahem. Right? Too old, disqualified. Yochal Mumen Paislim Bahem, perhaps. A personal blemish. A bodily imperfection would also affect the Levi's ability to do his task in the Beis Hamidash. Vidinu. And you would say so based on a Kavachaymer. Since Pakehanim, where age is not a factor, is not a disqualifying element, still mumin, a mum is Paislim Bahan. So wouldn't you agree that Levim, that by a Levi Shashonim, Paislim Bahan, they're affected by age? And then wouldn't you agree, Shayu, Mum, Paislim Bahan, they're also affected by mumin? Tamaloyim, our comes to Pasuk Zois. Ah, Levim. Only this is a factor at play when it comes to Levim. Age, and not Mum. Zois Levim, Ve'en Acheres. But the other factor is not, is not an element at play. La Levim. Okay, so once we establish that, let's shift over to the Kayhanim. So we know a Mum disqualifies a Kayhanim. We have Psukim about that. What about the age factor? Yochel, perhaps, you can suggest. That, yeah, you are Kayhanim, Psulim, Bishonim. Shonim can make a Kayhanim fit as well. 
אבל לדינו בייסן הקו החיימר. מה לווים שאין מומן פייסלן בהם? סינס לווים which are unaffected by מומן, still they are affected by age, שאין הם פייסלן בהם, סונלי דה קיינם, שהמומן פייסלן בהם which are affected by מומן. אין לדין which you agree that certainly שיהיו שאין הם פייסלן בהם too old should disqualify. תמוד לא אמר. Back to that פוסק, זויס אשר ללווים. Only a levy reckons with age. ולא יש על קייהנם, it's not a factor for קייהנם. So now we know that a levy must be of the right age, but beyond 50, he has to stop. Now, when did that apply? Even in the Beis HaMikdash? Even in Shiloi? That was the Mishkan Shiloi, where there was no transporting going on, like that took place back in the, in the Midbar, where they transported the Mishkan, the heavy loads. Yochalaf b'shilu v'beis ha'ilamim came perhaps this age factor is at play even Beis HaIlamim, which is the eternal, eternal Beis HaMikdash. And Shiloi as well. Right, okay? So that applies there too, that once he's 50, he can't do... Talmud Leimer, no, the answer is Lavoid avoidas avoida v'avoidas mas, the Pasuk there, and giving us the age factor, relates it to physical work. The carrying of the loads. Lo Yomardi, this issue is only pertinent El Bezman Shavoyde Bekasa, when they carry it. On their shoulder. So between 30 and 50 is the most fit period of a person's life. Not only those, Levim were fit, were, were, were um, fit and capable and qualified. But further down in history, once we arrived at Shiloi and in the Vesa Ilamim, Rashi says over there the Avoid of the Levim did not encompass carrying loads and transporting the Mishkan, rather it was just Shoy Arim. Right, the ones that were in charge of keeping the gates open and closed, and the uh, Mishayrim, the singers, the choir masters, the, the, uh, the choir members, and the um, musicians. So once we got to that point, age is no longer a factor, as long as you can still sing, right? Now comes an interesting contradiction regarding the um, minimum age requirement of a levy. So the Pasuk speaks about 30 to 50, right? But here goes a, an apparent contradiction within the Pesuk. Kosev Echad Oymen, what Pesuk it says, 25 years old. Mibin Chamesh Ve'esrim Shana Vamala, starting at 25. But Kosev Echad Oymen, the other Pesuk says, starting from 30. Men Shloishim. Which way? Iyav Shaloyim Men Shloishim, you can't insist on 30. Shkvar Nemar Chafei, it already says 25. Iyav Shaloyim Men Chafei, you can say 25, it already says 30. Shkvar Nemar Shloishim, which way is it? The answer is, the actual work started at 30, but five years was for training. Right? Training and how to uh, dismantle the Mishkan, a lot of different uh, details there. Uh, and uh, learning music, right? learning how to play an instrument, a big, uh, big job to train in music. Okay, so how do we work this out? Chafei le Talmud. At 25, they started studying, they started training. But the actual Avoida started at 30. Mikan, we learned from here an interesting lesson. Since the Torah gives him sort of a, a five-year limit of learning, we learn from here that a successful Talmud should have it wrapped up in five years. We learn from here that a Talmud should have it wrapped up in that has attempted to study but hasn't really achieved any success. He's forgetting, he's not into it. Hey, Shana, we tried it for five years. You know that uh, he belongs, else, belongs elsewhere. Shubin Eroya, he shouldn't expect a turnaround. Rabbi Yisrael Emre Gimel Shana, he says, uh, the um, litmus test is a three-year test. This was when Mechad Netzar, when he trained them in for three years. You see that training period typically takes three years. And you should start seeing success. To teach them, you know, the language. Now the other opinion, which holds that it's five years, although here it seems that three years should be enough, Shani Lashon Kazdim the Kalil. They were learning an easy... Uh, topic, the uh, language of the custom, which is easy to learn. So that, you know, is a three-year uh, 
stint. But typically, uh, to properly train with some, for something complex and complicated, it's, it's five years. Now the opposing opinion says, well, no, uh, typically it's a three-year uh, stint. Shan Hilchas Avoda did Kifan, even though we find by the Mishkan, by the Levim, it's five years because the Hilchas Avoda were uh, numerous and intricate. and In fact, it takes five years. But uh, to train for a regular uh, for a regular um, vocation, three years should be enough. Interestingly, I once read that somebody came to the stipler. He says, you know, Mara says, you try five years and you're not successful, you just give up. So I, I tried to learn and uh, it's not working. It's already five years, I'm giving up. So it was a, a Rebbe, a Rashiva brought his tomb, but it was complaining, so the stipler shoot him away, dismissed him. He says, ah, the Gemara, ah, the Gemara is talking that he worked five years. Do you know how hard they work for five years? Okay, if it's not working, apparently, you know, his mission is elsewhere, but you, can you say you really worked hard for five years with a full investment, with full energy? You can start again. We'll see you in five years from now. <laughs> Don't get discouraged. Just work a little harder and you'll be successful. Turn it up on him. Says the Brysa, Koyin Mishayavi Shtei Saris. Achi Yaskin. So, as we learned, the uh, years, the, you know, the age factor is only a factor by the Levian. By Kayanim, it's not so. So, what's the minimum age for a Koyin to start doing the Avoida? Mishayavi Shtei Saris. As soon as he exhibits the two pubic hairs, you know, he signs, signs of maturity, he's in. Until what point? What's the cutoff point? There is no cutoff point. Achi Yaskin. Until his old age. Kasha Lavoida can do the Avoida. But, Provided he's unblemished, a woman person boy, he has a mummy's person. On the other hand, Ben Levi, right, a Levi regarding his roles, we Ben Shleishim Ben Chamishim, Kashal Avoda from thirty to fifty, Vishan and Poislam boy, and as we learn, age is a factor that qualifies him. Past fifty, he's out. Oh, but again, that's only limited to the midbar, where being fit was a uh, Precondition, Bameh, Devar, Mamur, and when does this apply? Ba'il Moishu, a midbar, back in the midbar. Avo Beshilu, Beshilu, but further into that, Yisrael, Ain of Sullen, Elo Bekoil, there's no disqualifying element. Yours is not an issue. Unless he lost his voice, he can't sing. Then he shouldn't be involved in the uh, choiring. I'm erasing my crow. Where do we find this in the Pasa? We turn down the base. That uh, other than the, the voice factor, Age isn't an issue. But he ke'echad. Rashi says ke'echad. Even this Canaan, we had uh, youngsters and older people in the choir. Machatzatzrim, Mashirim, Lashmi ke'echad. As long as you sound good, it's one ke'echad in unison. If you can sing, you're in. Achi yask. So back to the Cain. He's okay until very old age. Now there must be a cutoff point as well. Ad kama to what point? Amar Abelah, Amar Chanin, Ashi, Irates, until until he starts quivering, and then he's not fit for avoid anymore. But until that point, he's okay. No, no, some we find the Mishnah that speaks about about a Balkari on the mission. He's Tamei Shatavel. Now he went to the uh, Tvila, Velayha to Mayim before he tended to his water. So he had the carry experience, and then he went straight to the Tvila. We're concerned that perhaps there's still some carry material within him. Look at Shiyato, so after the Tefillah, when he tends to his water, Tommy, he's Tommy because the carry material that just came out made him Tommy again. Rabbi Yisri Aymer, it depends. Yeah, Bechayla, if he's a weak person, if he's ill, or he's or he's an older man, so then Tommy, this concern applies that perhaps the carry material was still within it. But be yellow, do we bury, but if he's a youngster, Ube bury, and a healthy one, then to her. Then he's okay because the full carry had left his body initially. So yellow that come. How do we define yellow? What's considered a youngster in this regard? Amar b'lo, amar b'chanino. This is the test. Let him balance himself on one foot and see if he could uh, take his shoe on and off. V'chaylis min ole b'nele min ole and take off and put his shoe back on. That tells us that he's still at his prime strength. Amru Allah Bar In fact, Rabbanina would do that even in his old age. His energy was so preserved. Shayyab Ben Shmaynim Shani was 80 years old. He was able to do this feat. 
balance himself on one foot, and take care of the shoe on the other foot. You know how? Because I was well taken care of when I was young. My health was guarded, hence preserved until old age. Chamen, the hot water that I was bathed with, with shemen and the oil, my mother applied to me in my youth. That helped me later on, helped me preserve my strength and my energy. Hein omduli, basic nusi, they stood by me and helped me maintain my energy and gave me longevity. Tanarabon. Speaking about the age factor regarding serving the public, the small is zikno. Roy liasa shleat sibor, v'leirif neateva lisa es kapov. If a fellow's beard is already filled, now he's qualified to serve as a shleat sibor. Rashi says this means uh, to blow a shayfar, to um, be a leader of the community, to give malchus, etc. Number two, we learn of Neateva to be the Shliach Tzibur in the Shul. Felisa is Kabbav, he's a Kain, to do Berchus Kainim. Now Taisus asks, based on the Gemara Megillah, even a cotton can do somebody. So he says, we're talking about special times, a time of Tanis, a time of Mahmadis. There, only a person who's in a small Ziknai, who looks mature and respectable, he is qualified to be a Shliach Tzibur, to be a Chazan in public. Okay, regarding Avoid in the Besam Bidosh, at what point is a coin fit? You don't have to wait that long. Mishyavish Te Cyrus as soon as he's a gadol. Rabbi Yamir, no. 20 is a starting point. When his mind matures, he's no longer a teenager. Rabbi Yamir, my opinion is, Ashe Ben Eshem. He has to wait until he's 20 years old to do the Avoid in the Besam Bidosh. Omar Abchiz, my time with the Rabbi, who is Rabbi coming from the Chsiv? Of a Pasik. By Amidu Zalavim, Ben Eshem Shon of Amal. He had to wait until the Levim was 20. To do service in the Beis Hamidrash, not say al mechas Beis Hashem. You see, twenty is a starting point. Says the Gemara Beidach, the opposing view, who doesn't require twenty, says, "Well, this pasuk not sayach. Not sayach means heavy work, shani. That's different. You have to be at your prime uh, strength." Says the Gemara, hold it. The pasuk is not speaking about kaihanim. We're talking about kaihanim. The pasuk is speaking about levim, and we know that a levi. Nowadays, right, in the Beis Hamikdash, it's no issue of minimum or maximum age as long as his voice is still intact, right? The answer is sometimes Kaihanim were called Levim. After all, they were from the same Shevet. In fact, we find 24 instances in Tanakh that Nikru Kaihanim were called Levim. The following is one of them. And we know Tzadik was a Kayin. The Pasuk refers to his kids as Levim. Ish Mizarach al We learn from here that to serve in the Mesa a Kayin has to be an Ish, an adult. Mikan Amar Blazer. Based on this, Rabbi Leza teaches us, Katan, a kain who's a minor, possible avoid, they can't do service. A few little time, even if he has no blemish at all. Maybe also a kasher avoid, at what point is he kasher? Mishyavish day saris, when he turns into an adult. But even a teenager, teenager is okay, you don't have to wait until 20. Avol echav al kayanim. But there was an issue. His fellow Kayana wouldn't let him serve. Ain mani chanaisa lavid. Ad until he turns 20. No teenagers allowed. Adji ben Esh. Now, who's speaking in this price here? A minute ago, we had a machlekes, right? Rabbana say it's okay at 13. And Rabbi says you have to wait until 20. Ikad Amri says, some say, ha Rabbi, this price here is actually Rabbi Shita. Who says 20 and up. I feel a soul to Rabbana Leslie. Truthfully, it's not like. Rebbe disqualified him. If he starts the avoid, he does it. Okay, done is done. It was just that they hesitated. They um, would not allow him to come in. But it wasn't like a halachic impediment. Vikadamri. Others learned Rebbe is slept so with the No, Rebbe took it a step further. He the Rabbanon. Below 20 is puzzle. Absolute puzzle. Vah Rabbanon he. This price that speaks about the uh, Kahanam getting, getting in his way, that is Shita's Rabbanon who agrees somewhat. They concede, that preferably he shouldn't be doing work, it's not covered. But if he does it, of course it works. And it's acceptable. 
Okay, so let's just recap this Gemara before we continue. We had this contrast between Kahanam and Lagim. By Kahanam, it's about being a Tom. Blemish uh, would, would make them unfit. Um, there is a minimum age, which is uh, Bar Mitzvah, or going to some 20 years old. And you can go on and on until, uh, as long as he still has uh, the ability to do the Avoida, the test would be the uh, single footed test. Whereas Levim, they work on a different track. It's not about uh, Mumin, it's about um, the ability to serve. So in the Mishkan, it had to be from 30 to 50 because it involved you know, carrying those heavy loads. But nowadays, it's uh, all ages. Uh, as long as he still has the ability. For instance, if he's a singer, he has to have the, the coil, etc. Continues the Gemara. But the Mishnah. Toyer b'kli cheres, tell me b'kol akil. Now we're going to compare different types of utensils. A kli cheres made of earth, right, earthenware, pottery, has its own guidelines regarding becoming tummy. And the case where the klicheres is immune from tumma, for instance, if the tumma touched its back, the outside, klicheres remains unaffected, tummy b'chalakela. If it's made of other material, other, other type of utensils, does contract tumma from its back. Conversely, toy b'chalakelem, something which is considered okay regarding other kalem, tummy b'chalakeles, would affect the klicheres. As we're going to see in a minute. Tanur Rabban. Avir Klicheres, the airspace of a Klicheres. Let's say there's a lizard suspended in the air space, the internal airspace of the Klicheres, inside without touching the walls. Tame. The Klicheres becomes Tame. Even the airspace transmits Tum. It goes both ways. If there's Tum in the Klicheres, now the Klicheres is Tame through its airspace, and likewise, the Klicheres is Tame for whatever reason. And now you hang a piece of bread on there, right? So the klicheres now transmits tumma through its airspace as well. It's a two-way conduit. And that's unique to klicheres. Vigabi tar, but the back is tar. Like we explained, if something touches the back of a klicheres, there's no transmission of tumma. On the other end, aver kalakelem tar, other types of utensils, metal utensils or whatever, the airspace, airspace is not a conduit. Vigabi tumma, but their back is. Nimtza, so it turns out we have this equation. They're exact opposites. Tor b'klicheres, something which is okay by klicheres, like the back, tomi b'chalakelem, affects another kli. Tor b'chalakelem, the airspace, which is okay by other kelem, tomi b'chalakelem, is tomi b'chalakelem. But now, immediately, how do we know? The Tana Rabban. The Pasuk says, a klicheres, where something fell into it, something tomi, entered the airspace, toichai, of the klicheres, so it becomes tummy. Everything is tummy. Even though there was no direct contact, it was just merely airspace. Ato, I mean, you're su- suggesting, you're insisting that airspace is what we're talking about. Even though there was no direct contact, perhaps we're speaking that it did touch the material of the klicheres itself, not via the airspace only. How do we know? Amr is metami. Rabbi Yenison ben Aftumus Aymer, I'll tell you how I know. Nemar toichai litame, v'nemar toichai litame. You see, as we just explained, the airspace is being used both ways. Litame, to transmit tumma to an item that is suspended in the airspace of the klicheres. So the klicheres had already become tame somehow, and now there's transmission taking place from the walls through the airspace onto something which is now suspended in the airspace. And there's a pasuk for that. Koyla shel b'soychay yitma, something which is b'toych the klicheres is tamei. V'nemar toychay li tamei. We find the lashon toychay. We find that word. We find that term regarding the klicheres receiving tuma from a lizard or whatever that's being lowered into the klicheres, and the tuma is transmitted through the airspace to the wall. Ma toychay omer le tamei. Ava bishalina. We compare the two phenomena, just like the first. Toichai, describing the tumma moving from the klicheres to the item inside the container. Ava Naga, that applies even though there was no direct contact. How do we know? We'll see in a minute. So apparently it's through the airspace. 
So once we know it travels that way, we'll also know it travels in the reverse. Af toiche, likewise the term toiche, Omer litame, describing the klicheres receiving toma from the item that was that arrived into the kli applies even though there was not a direct contact. Merely via the airspace. Ava So we're working with a premise, right? That the klicheres transmits indirectly, likewise it receives indirectly. No, how do you know the first part? How do we know? How do we know that the klicheres transmits indirectly? I'll be honest and I'll tell you how. The Torah says, Koil hasher yitma. Anything found in the klicheres becomes tummy. Now imagine, Hatayra ha'ida klicheres. Torah now is testifying, declaring that the klicheres transmits tuma. We move to the next Amad. Vafilu mali chardal. Even if the Kli Kheris is filled with little teeny mustard seeds. Now, if direct contact is needed, how much of that, how much of those seeds did actually touch the walls of the Kli? Picture it. A bowl full of mustard seeds. So only the outer rim, the outer layer, which is actually adjacent to the walls, is touching the wall. And still the Torah says the entire supply is tummy, all the seeds. That's impossible. Unless you work with the airspace concept. Here the Torah is teaching us, Klicheres, it's metame, anything within its airspace, within its interior. Hence we know that airspace is a conduit by Klicheres, both ways. For the Klicheres to give over Tuma to its content, and likewise to receive Tuma from its content. All the best to you, and that's Lachar, Rabbi.